This is a step-by-step -step build video of the Titan 1 2.0 PC. Now, even if you don't have this PC, there's a lot of good information in here about just building a PC in general and also water cooling. So I'll put chapters down here on the bottom so you can skip around and you can find a lot of stuff in here very useful. So you can follow this build video and get yours built, or you can also uh, go to bitspower.com and under the Titan 1 2.0, uh, they have install instructions on how to do uh, the install, um, you know, for the water cooling and all that stuff. Um, also include that link down in the description if you want to check it out, but this pretty much has everything you need. Before I build in this piece, I'm going to go ahead and do a paint job to the top panel and the back panel here. Do something kind of a cool design, maybe some uh, black and blue, uh, some gloss and a cool design. Let's go do that. So the motherboard we're going to use is the Rogue Strix X570E Gaming motherboard. And the CPU we're going to install is the Ryzen 9 5950X. So you're going to lift up the lever, open it up like that, take your CPU, make sure you don't touch the pins right here, don't want to bend those bad boys, grab it by the side, and then um, you're going to see like a little triangle in one corner. And then that corner, that triangle, is going to go down to this little triangle right here. You'll see a triangle down on the socket. So you're just gonna drop it right in. Um, it should not be forced in. It should be just drop right in. And then you're gonna take this lever and you're gonna push it all the way down. Boom. So we're gonna install this RAM, it's G-Skill, real good RAM, DDR4, 32 gigs, got four sticks of 3600 megahertz speed, CL16, which is pretty fast. So we're gonna go ahead and install these bad boys. And then what you're gonna wanna do, Flip these down, and then if you have a board, you also can flip the other side down, but these do not on this board. And then you're gonna go ahead and take your RAM stick, don't touch the bottom here, and then you're gonna go ahead and put it in. There's only one way you can do the RAM sticks because they have this little slot right here. Make sure that if you have it backwards, that you don't force it down because it won't fit. It won't push down. So they're only gonna go one way. So one side is a little bit longer, and so that goes on this top right here. We're gonna go ahead, put it in the slot, and you should see push down gently where it clicks. Click, 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 click. RAM installed. All right, now we're gonna go and install an NVMe or SSD. It's gonna be the hard drive that uh, stores Windows, holds Windows, all your files, folders, games, and all that stuff. This one is the Corsair MP400, um, and uh, I'm gonna install this on the motherboard and so what you need to do if you have a different motherboard just find out where your m.2 slot is and go ahead and install it here on this board uh, i have to remove this first and then here's the we're going to slip it in and probably go a 45 degree angle somewhere right there and then just kind of give it a little push and then that should just sit nice and snug right here when you push it down um, they're going to want to grab your little screw like this um, that might be part of your motherboard uh, bag, um, but that is your M.2 screw for the M.2 slot here. We're going to put that down right here. Okay, that's installed right there. And um, I, I've already used this board, so this protective uh, sleeve right here, you want to go ahead and remove that uh, so this uh, thermal pad right here can make contact with your NVMe. So remove that and put that down and close it back up. Now time for the CPU block. And uh, what I'll do is I'll post the instructions here on the video from bitspower.com's website installation guide um, for a couple seconds so you can see Intel versus AMD. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do AMD and then if you have Intel, you can just kind of still follow along with this video and uh, you should have the installation instructions. So this CPU block has the AMD bracket on by default. And if you have Intel, um, you're gonna be looking at these guys and so this is a regular uh, Intel and then but if you have a 12,000 series like an LGA 1700 uh, you're going to use this and the hardware for it and then this is going to be the back plate you're going to use this uh, for the back of the motherboard that you'll screw into but since we're not doing Intel we're going to get rid of these things these three and we're going to just do CPU block that already has the AMD bracket already on it and then you're gonna grab this bag and then you're gonna get AMD here. And then here's 
Intel, uh, but we don't need that. And then we're gonna grab these. And we're gonna grab these. And here's a little Allen wrench here. For AMD, we're gonna go ahead and remove these. And uh, we're gonna keep this back plate though. Keep that back plate on there. And then uh, this thing will screw into right here using this hardware here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're keeping this back plate. Keep that thing right here. All right, so we got our back plate already on there. And I'm gonna grab our little, uh, these little cups and these screws. All right, we're gonna go ahead and grab these cups. And what we're gonna do is we're going to grab these cups with the bigger hole right here. We're gonna put the cup over the top of the little bracket, like so. So they fit right on top. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the screws. And uh, we're gonna take these and we're gonna put that screw right down in there. It's gonna look like that. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, this already has thermal paste on it right here. So we're not gonna touch that. We're gonna take the protective plastic off right here. Don't touch the thermal paste. And we're gonna go ahead and just put that down right here so bits power is straight up and down because this is the arrow pointing in the in and then pointing out is the out. So the in is on top, out is on the bottom. I'm just gonna prop that down here. And there we go. Now we're gonna take these guys. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and uh, take these washers or the spacers, pop those down first. I'm gonna take our spring and we're gonna put those down next. And then we're gonna take our we're gonna take our thumb screws, screw it down just to hand tighten them. Don't over tighten them. And so what we do is when we usually tighten these, we usually go I'll put this down just a little bit, and then I do diagonal. Put this one down just a little bit, and then I get over. And diagonal. And what that will do is help kind of push it down evenly. You don't want to go down too far on one side and then try and go down. It'll squish the thermal paste. Usually when I just drop the thermal paste down on like a little piece size, it'll squish it to one side or the other. So this will allow it to kind of just go down evenly. And then I'll just kind of do maybe like two diagonals, just kind of slowly work it down. And you just kind of want to tighten it up a little bit. You don't want to go too tight. You want to have some spacing in the springs. Okay, those are on. So now you have your CPU block on. Boom, done. This has a sticker on it too, so let's go ahead and remove that on. Ready for that peel? There we go. Nice and shiny. All right, so before we drop the motherboard down into the case, um, we're gonna go ahead and on the back of the case, there's a little, you know, three and a half inch spinning hard drive bay. Um, we need to get the motherboard screws out. Just take that out and then undo. Take this little box out and then in here, there's a bag with all our screws that we need. And so we're gonna go ahead and just put this cover back on. Then I'm gonna flip this guy down on his back so we can go ahead and put the motherboard down in here. All right, let's look at the top down again. All right, so in the box is a bag of screws, and then within that one, I'm gonna go grab our motherboard, screws, and here's where I like to have, kind of like just like a, you know, metal 
magnet tray to hold all my screws and all that stuff. It has a magnet on the bottom. Um, and so I like to put all my screws and stuff in there so they don't go everywhere and I lose these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put these in here. And the ones we are looking for, they look like they have like a little washer embedded in them. They look like this, that has like a little washer on the outside. And those are the only ones um, that, you know, that will go into these little uh, standoffs right here. They'll go in nice and smooth. After building PCs for a long time or many PCs, you'll find that a lot of, th a lot of these things kind of are idiot proof. You should never have to force anything. You know, if the screw is not fitting, it's either crooked or it probably doesn't belong. So right now we're gonna go ahead and drop our motherboard in and uh, let's grab, let's throw these, throw this on right on top of the standoffs here. So these holes, what I'm looking at, uh, these holes right here are sitting on these little standoffs on the case. We wanna drop that right on there. And then what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and take these motherboard screws and we're gonna go ahead and just screw in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motherboard in, boom. All right, so now we're gonna install our fans. Um, and we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install three on the bottom here. So I don't need these uh, two and a half inch SSD holders. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove those, set them off to the side. There's other places you can use the SSD in the back. I'll show those later. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna install some fans, three fans here, and we wanna install the cables on the back so you can't see them. They'll run along the back right here. We're gonna flip it over to be able to uh, install the fans using some of these screws. And make sure you look at the fan orientation. Um, the, usually with the fan bars, um, that is where the air goes. So you, the air will go suck in here and go up there. And what we wanna do typically, what you wanna do is you want the front and the bottom to be intake. So that means you want the air to flow, cold air flow, and then usually the top and the back, you want it to be exhaust. So you want the air to flow out. So you wanna basically flow, flow this way and flow this way. So you got your fans right here and then so this flows this way. These ones also show a little cable of where the air flows. And so typically the fan bars are where it exits. So you can see the fan, the air goes this way. And so we're gonna wanna install them like this. So the fan bars are on top because we wanna take the cold air and we want to bring it up. And then these are exhausting, so intake. And we're gonna install some fans here as intake. We want to bring cold air from here, and then this will exhaust it. So flip your case so you can get to the bottom of this. So you can go ahead and install the fans and uh, remove this dust guard filter. So here's the fan screws we're gonna use, and they usually come with the fans anyway, so we're gonna use those to screw in the fans. Cables in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our screws and line up with the holes. Done. I'm gonna go ahead and install these three fans right here in the side. I'm gonna be using the Bits Power Nord Dual Fin, and I'm gonna go ahead, and these are really cool. These look really cool, but um, I'm gonna do max cooling. So I'm gonna put these as intake so they take the cold air, bring it in. Um, unfortunately, I have to kind of cover them up like this because that's the way the air moves. It'd be really sick if I could do it like this, though. Um, and you can do it like that. Um, some people do it for aesthetics and then uh, we're gonna exhaust out there, but for max cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in and then have it cold air in, exhaust up. Now that we've got the fans installed, let's start plugging everything into the motherboard. Uh, before we do that, I kind of want to get to the cables behind here. So let's remove this little uh, panel right here, this little uh, cable management, and you can also install SSDs on here. And uh, um, so let's remove this so we can get access to the back here. So 
So the fun part about this case is we have nine fans. So what we want to do is we want to be able to uh, control the fan speed. So you got usually the fan speed cables and then you usually have uh, the RGB cables. And so um, what you need to do um, and hopefully with the fans that you got, you have maybe like a little controller. Most of the fans come with some controllers right now. Um, these are daisy chained. Uh, so at least they have, you know, the three of them have two cables. So that's good because they used to have like, you know, two, four, six each fan would have two. And so what we need to do is um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to use the controller that uh, came with the bits power. So what you want to do is you want to be able to plug in all the RGB, the three pin, uh, five volt RGB cables. Uh, to your controller because there's not enough headers on your motherboard. Uh, this one only has two RGB headers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fans, I'm going to put them on kind of like one circuit onto, onto one RGB header and we'll plug them into a controller. And then we're going to take uh, the RGB from, there's an LED strip on the distro plate and also the CPU block. And so we're going to go ahead and take the RGB and we're going to connect these cables. So these are on the same and then the fans are on a separate one. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll plug everything in the controller. And then also we're gonna plug in the fan speed uh, controllers so we can control the fan speed. So I'm gonna plug these three fans up here into the RGB. And then we're gonna plug the other ones. Let's get the cables from the other side here. And then the bottom ones, go ahead and poke those cables through here. All right, then this cable, here's the controller here, and then this cable is gonna be plugged into the RGB header, three pin, five volt header on the motherboard. And then let's go ahead and connect our fans right here. Fans are plugged into the controller, and then also the RGB is plugged in. So now let's connect uh, the RGB, uh, the cable from the CPU block, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, connect it to the back here. Um, I like to do a little cable management, kind of hide it, make sure it's not sticking out. And then I'm gonna plug this cable in. So this one is the CPU block. This one's on the distro. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. There we go. So those guys are tied together. And then all we need to do is just bring this guy, plug this into the motherboard header, header, motherboard header motherboard header. We're going to go ahead and uh, poke this back through. And then this is going to go into a five volt three pin header for RGB. My motherboard has two of them. They have one right here and one on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these ones in. Uh, so the block on the distro will plug into this one. And then the fans are all plugged to the controller. The controller will plug in to right here. And so this header will control all the fans. So let's go ahead and plug this in right here. And then we're gonna plug the fans from the controller down in here, let's pop those out. So you don't want the four pin, you want the three pin, one, two, three. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in this pump. Here's the pump, and when, right here on the tag it says, uh, if you wanna do PWM control, you put it in the CPU fan header, or if you want full speed, you're gonna Put it into the AIO pump header. So we're just going to do full speed because what I want to do, I want to do full speed. So we're going to plug it in um, to the AIO pump header and then we're going to plug in the fans into the CPU header for PWM control, meaning that you can control the speed uh, instead of full speed all the time. You don't want your fans being full speed all the time. It's going to be really noisy. It's going to act like an airplane is going to take off. So we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to take this off because we don't need this sticking out. So on this motherboard here, and most of them, uh, the CPU fan header and the AIO pump header usually is pretty close to the CPU around here. Uh, mine, you know, most of that I use Asus and Aorus. Uh, most of them are always kind of in the upper right area. Check your motherboard uh, to see exactly where the CPU fan header is. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna poke out here. We're just gonna cable manage. We're gonna bring it through and then we will poke it through the top here. It's kind of a tight fit, but CPU fan labeled right here, CPU fan header, and then AOIO pump right here. And so we're gonna go ahead and just 
There's little grooves right here. There's only one way they can kind of fit. And then those little grooves go on top. There's a little lip right here. And then you're gonna wanna have those pointing up and then just kind of slide it in. So now we're gonna take from my controller um, your controller is different. You're going to have to read the manual. Some of them plug into, um, you know, the USB 2.0 header. Um, some plug in. Uh, just follow what your controller says because uh, yours will be different from mine. I'm going to pop out the same way and we're going to plug in to right here CPU fan header. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug in uh, all the front I.O. cables to the motherboard. All right, the first cable we're gonna do is the HD audio. So we ran uh, the cables from the back and through the holes underneath the motherboard, and we're gonna plug in this HD audio cable. Uh, mine on my motherboard is located in the lower left-hand side, and the HD audio, when you look at it right here, it has uh, this one blank pin, basically where there's no hole in it, and so you wanna make sure that is on top you know where the HD audio header is on your motherboard. Uh, there's no pin on that one slot. So we wanna make sure we line it up right where that uh, the pin is not. And we just go ahead and slide it right on in. Boom. Yeah, I had this problem before with the other Lee and Lee that when you have fans on the bottom um, and then you try to do the USB 3.0 cable, there's not enough clearance to get this cable uh, that's shooting straight out into this header right here because these are sitting too high and I can't plug this in. So what I had to do on my other one, I had to get a, a 90 degree cable where basically it comes out and then it goes down. And so I had to get that from Cable Mod. There might be another adapter or something that you might be able to do. Um, but this is going to be a problem if you, or you can take, I've seen some people I think take like the middle fan out or something like that. Um, but you can go ahead and do that for now. I'm not going to go ahead and plug this USB 3.0 cable in right now. Next up is the USB-C cable. And uh, on my motherboard, it's right here, right below the 24 pin power. And so we're going to go ahead and just plug that in. There we go. So these are the fun ones. We have the power switch, the HDD, LED, and the power plus and negative. Um, and so look on your motherboard manual to see exactly where this, uh, the, the pins are, the header for this is. Uh, mine's on the lower right hand corner here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug in the bottom one first. So basically this little header kind of has two rows of pins. And then so the bottom left is the HDD, LED, and the positive is on the left hand side. We're gonna, so we're gonna start with that one on the bottom because then it's easy to get stuff in on the top. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, the positive is on the way left. So we're gonna grab this positive one and we're gonna go plug that in here. Okay, plug that one in. And then we're gonna do this negative one to the right of that one and then the power switch. So the power switch doesn't really matter where you go. Basically, when you push the power, it kind of connects these two together. Uh, so it doesn't matter what orientation, there's no positive or negative on that one. So and that goes into the ones right next to the power positive, the power negative. And so go ahead and slide that in right there and then you should be good to go. All right, so now we're gonna install the PSU. And this one is the Corsair RM750X 750 watt PSU. All right, so the cables we're gonna grab, we're gonna go ahead and do a 24 pin here that's uh, powering the motherboard. We're gonna go ahead and just plug that in to the motherboard on the PSU here, which it is right here. And the next one we're gonna do, we're gonna get the CPU. Uh, you'll probably only need one cable for CPU. This is a 5950, requires uh, some good power. Uh, typically, you can just do one cable and plug it in uh, and should be fine. Uh, but if you're overclocking or if you got like a power hungry CPU, I just do two, uh, it's better safe. To give it some more power than not enough. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug in where it says CPU. I'm gonna plug this cable in here. And I'm doing two. Like I said, you could probably only do one. All right, two CPU. And then we're gonna go ahead and we have the SATA power. Uh, these are the SATA power and that's gonna power 
um, these guys right here. And sometimes if you have any thing that requires this kind of power or even your SSDs, you're gonna need some of these. And then that will be powering those. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use, plug that in. These are the SATA ports. So go ahead and plug it in where it says SATA. And then I'm gonna be using a 3070 Ti, which has three eight pin, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead, and so this is the PCIe for your GPU. And so then you're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look to see where it says PCIe. And then what I'm gonna do once I install this PSU, uh, I have some beautiful cables. These are extensions, so we're gonna use the existing uh, cables from the PSU. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and plug the extensions, basically plug into the original cables that came with the PSU. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and use these that will actually be visible, that will come out and we'll plug into the motherboard and then we'll plug into the CPU and then we'll plug into the GPU. And so these will be visible. And so you don't have to get these, but these make your build a lot better. This one, these ones are from Mainframe Customs, my guy there, he made some beautiful cables. All right, so the PSU, you're gonna wanna go ahead and you're gonna make sure that this fan needs to breathe. This PSU needs to breathe and grab cool air. And so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna make sure this fan points out and then we're gonna go ahead and screw these in. And so these PSU screws are a little bit larger head right here. We started using these Velcro ties that came with the case. Uh, start cable managing here and uh, tying some of these things back. Uh, I'm gonna do the CPU now. We'll put that in here and then I'm gonna do the PCIe. All right, boom. So we got it looking like this. This one cable and then into two and this one sole cable here for that motherboard. 24 pin here. I'm gonna pop that out here. All right, so we're gonna grab our cables here. We're gonna plug it in here. Here's where the CPU gets power up top here. EPS here. I'm gonna plug the 24 pin in. Make sure it's plugged in all the way. Now time for the GPU, which is the Asus Rogue Strix 3070 Ti. Beauty. Go ahead and remove some of the protective film on these bad boys. They are usually loaded with some protective film. You can do some sweet peels. Just peels everywhere. Remember before you plug it in, make sure you remove this protective cover here too. And usually what I like to do, I like to kind of test to see exactly how many of these expansion slots I have to remove. This one looks like it's two, so it'll probably remove these two right here. Um, but I just kind of like to put it up here and see, yep, these two right here, I'm gonna remove those and then we'll be able to uh, put the GPU in. All right, let's pop this GPU in. Make sure you flip this back so you can go ahead and just slide that in right like that. And then you wanna go ahead and tell it clicks. There we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab these screws and screw them back in. All right, GPU in. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get these cables plugged in here. Let's pop these out and let's get it on. All right, let's go ahead and put this cover back on, back here, and uh, you know what? I'm not taking time to make this look pretty um, since I'm probably gonna have to take it apart again. So, whatever, don't judge. All 
All right, so now let's install the fittings and the tubes. Uh, just a quick overview of how these fittings actually work. Um, this one's gonna actually be plugged into the CPU block and uh, what they do is they split into two. So what you'll do is you will put this in, install that directly onto the CPU block and then uh, this part right here, make sure you don't lose this little rubber gasket in here and you put that in here. Then that will go over this thing right here and then these rubber gaskets kind of create a nice little tight seal or these little O-rings. And so what you'll do is you'll just end up screwing these, pushing this on the little rubber seal right here. And then this, you'll push this in here. And then what you'll do is you'll screw that on and that will create a nice little tight suction gap and it won't leak. Uh, just make sure that you don't lose that little O-ring here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove these little covers or half of the fittings here. So make sure you get that little rubber gasket, that little O-ring. And then um, this one is a little longer. And so this one's going to be installed on the distro. And then that's going to be on the back right here. And this will be for if you have to move it forward or backwards. This gives some leeway right here, nice and long, which is nice. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this top here. And then this will basically insert like this. We can cut. So we got that one. Let's get this fourth one. Here we go. All right, let's go ahead and put them on. All right, let's install these 16 millimeter diameter uh, PETG tubes. That is the type of material. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these, uh, the other half of the fittings on here. And then on this side too. I'll go ahead and slide this in here. And then we're going to Slide this out a little bit so we can get in here and then push that in right here. Give it, make sure it's in snug. Make sure you kind of push it in a little bit. There might be, you can kind of see it uh, grabbing or feel it grabbing the O-rings and I had to push it in just a little bit to kind of go all the way in. Make sure it gets past both those two O-rings back here. So it looks like it's good in, it's good here. It's good here and we're gonna go ahead and uh, we'll push this O-ring a little bit up here. We're gonna grab this and then we're going to tighten that up here. There we go. And then we're gonna do this one, kind of put the O-ring, kind of leave a little gap, not all the way directly against it. Allow this to kind of pull in tight, squeeze it tight right here. There we go. Let's do the second one. We're gonna go ahead and put that on here. Here's the O-ring. And then we're gonna put this little here. And we'll slide that in here. And then once it lines up with the CPU block, which we pushed all the way in, lines up with the CPU block, we're gonna go ahead and push that in, make sure it gets past Kind of both those, there we go. Slide that little O-ring down a little bit. I usually, I don't put it all the way flush with that. I just kind of leave it a little bit gap and then I allow this when I screw it to kind of push that O-ring and kind of compress together right here. And then let's do the same here. Grab that O-ring. Let's screw that in here. There we go. So what's nice about this kit is that it's universal and it supports most major mother brand manufacturers. And so this, with this long fitting, it allows it to move left and right. If the CPU or the socket or the placement on the motherboard, you know, slightly to the left or the right. And also if it's up or down. So this little part right here, you can move it up or down. So the tubes can be perfectly horizontal. And there's four screws right here that you can loosen up and kind of move it up and then tighten it. So right now we're gonna check that. And if you're OCD like me, I'm gonna grab a little level to make sure that it's uh, perfectly level. 
and so it can go a little bit up. So we're gonna go ahead, loosen these four screws and uh, bring it up a little bit. So now that we loosen up a little bit, you can see that it kind of moves it up and down, which is kind of nice. And then, so we're gonna go ahead and test. And I think that's a good spot, like right about there. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten that up. We've got everything hooked up. Before we actually put the coolant in, we're gonna go ahead and check for leaks. Uh, one way to do it is using Bits Power Digital Leak Detector. And uh, another way of doing it is uh, old school. I don't like it. Um, you put like paper towels underneath all the potential leak problems or leak areas. And then hopefully like when you put the liquid in and actually circulate it, that there's no leaks and the paper towels will actually catch it. I don't like that because if you do have a leak, then I still got water. I'm gonna have to worry about the paper towels. Um, so before I do that, this is the safe way. This is the digital leak detector. And uh, presumably, presumably, we uh, have everything all nice and tight. There will be no leaks. This thing basically just kind of pumps air in and uh, sees if there's any kind of drop in air pressure or anything like that. So we, lot safer way. Highly recommend you get the Bits Power Digital Leak Detector um, to help you look for leaks because you don't want to be stuck having to clean up water potentially ruin your uh, expensive components. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, if you have this uh, Bits Power Leak Detector 2 and when you first use it, it's really, it acts like it doesn't work. Um, and I guess according to them, uh, they said that the valve in here is really tight. Um, and to just go ahead and push it hard a couple times. There we go. And then it should work, interesting. I like to do any last minute checks to make sure everything's kind of tight, make sure that there's nothing loose and there's not going to be a leak. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we got the leak detector out. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug this in to uh, one of our ports and we're going to pressurize it to make sure there's no leak. Uh, this one was a little hard to get to. I was wanting to do it in here, but that was kind of hard to get into. So I'm just going to do the one here on the bottom. And um, this is kind of the drain plug. We're just going to remove this whole fitting. And then we're gonna go ahead and just plug this cable in or screw this cable in and take this. And we're gonna go ahead and just screw that in. Okay, now that's connected. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna turn this just a little bit so this pump kinda of comes, uh, comes loose here. We're gonna pump that. Take out this back part first. I think there's a... Yep, so first time using, make sure you remove this little plastic piece on the battery. So let's go ahead and remove that so it gets connection and actually works. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this back on. Make sure this ring is back. So now you can see um, that if you push this, you can kind of toggle between uh, the different settings here. I think there's four different ones. So this is kilograms per centimeters. We're gonna do PSI. All right, so now we got the brand new leak detector uh, busted open or whatever since it was a tight uh, valve, I guess, when you first use it. We're gonna go ahead and pump it up uh, to about uh, four PSI is the max. So let's pump that up until it gets to about four. Looks like, and then let that sit there for about one minute per their instructions. It should be full of pressurized, and if there's a leak, it will drop down in pressure. All right, wait a minute. Looks like it hasn't dropped at all in pressure, so that is good. Looks like we're gonna be pretty comfortable that it's not gonna leak. Uh, this on the side right here is the release of the air pressure, so we're gonna go ahead and push this down. I found that if you push it all the way in sometimes, it kind of sticks, so just make sure you hear that and then it kind of lets out all the air here. Unscrew this. Screw this. Boom. Very important, put that back before you put any liquid in here. Make sure everything is tight here. We should be uh, airtight to put some liquid in here. Before I put the coolant in with the dye, I like to rinse everything out the loop with distilled water, basically, 
distilled water kind of run that through and it kind of cleans out anything if there's any kind of like metal shavings if it's a brand new radiator and all that stuff sometimes it has some kind of shavings or something that needs to be kind of cleaned cleaned out and flushed uh, only use distilled water do not use tap water or anything like that they have metals in there fluoride chlorine and all that stuff or you know some other stuff that basically uh, will kind of ruin your loop so only pure distilled water so we're gonna put some distilled water in this filling bottle and put some water in here we'll run it through all right pop this uh, fill cap off up here and then we'll go ahead and put this little hose in here make sure it gets all the way in Right there is good enough for now. We're gonna cycle it now, and get this moving around. All right, using this uh, 24 pin bypass connector, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna power our uh, pump. And uh, we're gonna put this on the motherboard power cable uh, to be able to kind of trick the PSU that everything's plugged in. And then this is gonna plug into uh, the pump that's plugged in the motherboard. So we're just gonna unplug these and plug it in here. Turn on the PSU to get the pump working and cycle the water through. So we're gonna unplug our motherboard 24 pin connector. Be careful, don't just yank it out because we have water in here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, plug that into the motherboard cable. So we're gonna do low speed or we're gonna do, you can also do full speed. Uh, but for right now, I'm just gonna do low speed. Uh, that'll get it cycling kind of at a slower rate and maybe I'll be able to get in here and add some more water uh, just without stopping the PSU uh, because we do not want to drain it all the way down where the water gets below the pump. You don't wanna run the pump dry, that's bad. So you wanna be able to start and stop the, the PSU by flipping the switch uh, if you need it but running this uh, low speed might be able to allow us to add some more water and keep the, the power flowing. So we remove the pump from the AIO pump header and we're gonna plug in this low speed. Okay, everything's plugged in. PSU set to off. It's not on with that. The little line means it's on, flowing, and this circle or whatever I think is off. It kind of blocks the power. It's kind of how I look at it. Uh, we're gonna plug that in. All right, so to get power to the pump, we're gonna go ahead and uh, power this PSU on, and then the pump should go ahead and cycle the water through it. Um, right now, depending on how you have your setup, the motherboard doesn't have any power, but the RGB and the fans do. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to unplug the SATA power connector in the back of the PSU, and then the only thing that will be turned on will be just the pump. All right, set of power unplugged. So the only thing we should get right now is just the pump and the pump will start cycling the water through. And we're using low speed, so we're able to add some more water here and keep this running. But see if we have it fast speed, it is gonna cycle water a lot faster. And you wanna make sure that the pump doesn't run dry. So if we have full speed, it's gonna go ahead and cycle that water a lot faster and it's gonna cruise through. You wanna make sure that you don't run that pump dry. So you make sure that you can control it, turn it on and off for the PSU, and if it gets too low and it's gonna run dry in any build, any water-cooled build, you wanna turn it off and you wanna go ahead and fill it up with water again. All right, you wanna make sure you don't fill above this line right here. We're going to let this run for a little while to kind of clean out you know, some of the stuff that's in the radiator, maybe the CPU block. Let that run a little bit and then we're gonna drain it. I'm gonna keep this uh, open, this fill plug open for right now to kind of let the air kind of uh, get out of these bubbles too. I guess it doesn't really matter right now, we're just kind of flushing it anyways. When we put the coolant in, we're gonna keep this air open for a little bit and let it kind of circulate and uh, get these air bubbles out of the system. Now we're gonna drain this liquid out and make sure you grab this uh, little drain plug that uh, it came with and then uh, grab something that you can you know, plug it into or stick it in and uh, like a little container here. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off here. Take only the front cap off, not this whole fitting. All the water's gonna shoot out. Don't be stupid. All right, so just the cap. This fitting is still here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this on and screw it in. First, make sure we kind of grab something that's gonna catch. We start screwing here. Let's move this to the edge a little bit. Ugh. And we're gonna go ahead, put this in here. Some water might shoot out soon. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try and get in here. Jeez. Make sure you screw it all the way so it really clamps down here and starts draining. Screw it all the way so it starts draining. You can see it going down right here. And in to the bucket. And if you have some stuff kind of stuck in these tubes, you can kind of lift it up, kind of tip it. So things start flowing and moving around. And after tipping it around, trying to get most of the water out all the time, uh, you can actually cycle through uh, multiple times, adding distilled water in here, draining it, until you're fairly happy, you know, with, uh, you know, doing it a couple times, it should kind of flush everything out. Uh, there's gonna be a little bit of water in here after trying to get all of it out. You're not gonna get it completely perfect unless you take some of these off and kind of drain some things. But, you know, we're kind of happy with where it is right now, trying to get most of the water out. So we're just gonna go ahead and next add the coolant. Make sure you put this drain cap back on. All right, time to add the coolant. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in the fill bottle here. And then uh, we're gonna do a blue dye here. They have other colors on the website or you can get them uh, on uh, other websites like uh, newegg.com or something or maybe Micro Center. But um, I'm gonna add a blue dye to this. This is gonna take forever doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can take off this little cap right here using just kind of like a Standard screwdriver here and see if we're gonna take off this little cover here. There we go. Oh god, did it go in the PC? What the hell? Oh, went back here. Alright, so I just took out the little cover, so now I'm just go in here, add it here. Alright, so let's put some uh, blue dye in here. And uh, we'll just kind of Put whatever we think, stir it up to see how blue we want it. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, let's put it into the fill hole up here. Make sure we push it a good way in here. Turn the pump on by turning the PSU back on, turn the pump in. Right now I have it on full speed. So um, let's see, make sure that we control it. If it gets too low, drops below the pump. We don't want to run that dry. So we'll stop once it hits down here. See that's kind of going dry. So we're gonna go ahead and put some more in now that we stopped it. Turn that pump back on again. We're gonna turn it back off. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. Turn it back on. All right, look like it's keeping up. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let this run. We're gonna add some more liquid. We're gonna keep it running though, uh, because if once we stop it, it seems like the liquid kind of fills up here because everything out of the radiator is pushing down. So we're gonna keep it running. We're gonna keep uh, the this top fill port open so it kind of gets out some of that air. And then before we stop it, we're gonna make sure that we close this fill port 
before we stop it because the water is going to come out. We don't want it to drip down. So right now we're going to add a little bit more water or some coolant. We're going to add some more coolant. And we're just going to keep it running for a little while to kind of let it circulate and get some of that air out. And just kind of let it flow. Get some of that air bubbles. And I'm not going to make sure that I don't go over. We can keep going for a little bit, I guess. Maybe make sure we don't go close to that hole here. Make sure we don't go over that hole. So we're going to go probably right up here. Should be pretty good. Let's see if we can pull this out here. Make sure we don't go over that hole here. So I'm just going to leave a little bit. Let's pull this out, let it run for a little while. All right, we let this run for about a couple hours. Um, just kind of work out all the bubbles. There's probably some bubbles in other places. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cap this uh, fill port and we're going to turn it off. We're going to kind of tip it around and kind of work out some of those bubbles. And then we're going to go ahead and turn it back on, remove the fill cap and see if uh, the rest of the bubbles can kind of work its way out. Put the fill cap back on because when we turn this off, we don't want the liquid to pour out since it's going to probably come down from the radiator here. So make sure that's nice and tight. All right, now that everything's locked up, let's turn the power off. All right, we unplug the power cable just because let's move some stuff around and uh, let's get these air bubbles moving a little bit, make sure we can get as much as we can out here. So I'm gonna tip it upside down right here. Maybe tip it forward a little bit. Maybe tip it a little back. All right, let's see what that did. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug in the power cable. We're gonna turn it on again. So get that pump moving. See if we can work out some more air bubbles. So everything's on, circulating. Let's remove this, unscrew this to let some air in again and let that run for a little bit longer to see if we can get rid of just a little bit more air bubbles in the system. Looks like we have a little bit more room too, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a little bit more coolant in. We let this run for a couple hours mower and it uh, looks like we got rid of uh, some other little bubbles. Uh, there's still a little bit here, but it'll eventually go away. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and tighten it back up or close this up, this little fill cap here. We're gonna go ahead and put this back on and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and call it as is. It'll eventually get rid of all this stuff here. Turn the pump off. All right, remove the 24 pin bypass connector here. So we're gonna remove this uh, cable right here. We're gonna plug this back into the AIO pump on the motherboard where it was. So that's back where it was. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this from the 24 pin motherboard connector. We're gonna plug this back in. Then I'm gonna plug my SATA power cable back into the PSU and uh, just so I can get power back to my uh, fans and RGB and stuff like that, you might not have had to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and put this cover back in, put our back panel back in. Now I'm gonna put the front glass panel that I took off. Uh, there's a piece of plastic on the inside here. Let's peel that off. And we'll put that in. Let's peel this. Peel. Nice. Peel. Before we put the top panel on, let's go ahead and let's put this uh, side panel. There is a uh, plastic on the inside. Just make sure you take that off first. And then the outside. Ah. 
pop that in. And then put on the top panel. Lock her up. Screw in the back two screws. Now let's plug in the power. Let's plug in a display cable or an HDMI cable into the GPU here, not the motherboard, GPU. Flip it so this line is on. Other end of the cable is plugged in the monitor. All right, we're gonna turn the power button on right now. We're gonna see if it posts, which means that it displays something on the screen, which will be good. Uh, you can also plug in your keyboard and mouse if you want, but all I wanna do is I wanna see if it posts. So let's hit this power button. This should turn on and we should see something on the monitor. Boom, this is good. New CPU installed. We're gonna go ahead and enter setup to configure your system. Congrats, you just built the Bits Power Titan 2.0, which may or may not have been your first water-cooled PC, so give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. So now what you're gonna to wanna to do, um, this video is only gonna be about building this thing. Since there are many different makers of motherboards, GPUs and all that stuff, everyone's setup is kind of a little bit different. So I'm gonna do some uh, video series of kind of like what to do after the build. Um, and I don't have those done quite yet. So typically uh, what I would do according to what's on the screen on the monitor, hit F1 to go into setup. Basically we kind of configure everything. And then what I would do in BIOS is I would turn on uh, XMP settings, which is the extreme memory profile, or basically you wanna get in and uh, bump up your RAM speeds to your advertised speeds. Cause by default, let's see, DDR4 is 2133 megahertz. This um, RAM supports, I think it's uh, 3200 megahertz or 36 megahertz, 3600 megahertz. So I would get in there, I would bump those speeds up, get your advertised RAM speeds, and then um, install Windows 10 or Windows 11 from a USB drive. Follow this video here to go ahead. I did do one of those, the install Windows 10 from USB flash drive. So follow those. Um, and then also once you get in, get Windows installed, you're gonna wanna install the drivers. So run the Windows updates. You're gonna wanna download drivers directly from your manufacturer's uh, website like the motherboard right here is Asus. Go to Asus, download uh, the motherboard drivers, and then uh, also GPU, download uh, any kind of software or drivers for your uh, system right here. And also, what I would do after you install all the drivers and stuff, I would go ahead and install the software to control all the RGB that you have in here. One of the things I also do after I build it is I go ahead and I bench test it and make sure I kind of stress test it to kind of make sure that everything's stable. And then I download Cinebench and uh, that kind of stress tests the system like the CPU. I also download Heaven, which uh, stress tests your GPU and kind of see exactly where you're at. So good job guys, I'll see you in the next one.